of gun violence um, and ways in which people can minimize harm. Marnie resides in South Denver with her husband, two children, and two loving dogs. And I don't know any other kind of dogs other than loving. So Marnie, thank you very much uh, for, for your patience and uh, ah, please, please begin. Hi, thank you all for having me. Thanks for being here today because who doesn't like to talk about gun violence prevention on a lovely Sunday morning? Um, but we really appreciate any opportunity to um, talk about and spread awareness of this issue. So we greatly appreciate you having me. Um, I am going to go ahead. I did create a PowerPoint. Um, are oh. you able to share? Can I share my screen? I will allow you to do that. Just hold on for a second. I didn't anticipate a PowerPoint. So I'm okay. so sorry. Yeah. You know what? At first I wasn't going to, and then I decided to go ahead and do that. Okay. Go ahead and do it because I think it's, um, just makes everything a little bit more clear. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, hold on for just a second and I will, there you are. You seen the green? Um, you will see the green. Oh. I, I, can't, I can't share your, you're gonna share your screen. Oh, I'm gonna so, share. Um, Oops. We'll do this Okay, together. you should be able to share your screen now, Marnie. Um, okay. Let's see this. Let's see if I can do this here. Can everybody see? Not yet. Okay, hold on. I'm getting there. Okay. Where do I, where does, where can I show at the bottom, right? Yeah, it's the bottom. Yeah, the little green thing that says share my screen. Ah, there we go, got All it. Right. Then you just click on the whatever the PowerPoint file, and then you click share in that, and it should just pop right up. Okay. There you go. We got it. You got it. Yeah. But now we got. Now you have to go full screen. Yep. You got it. Yeah, we see it. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Great job. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Here we go. I am going right. to, um, I've got quite a few slides and I know we we're, we're a little short on time, so I'm gonna run through them fairly quickly, um, at least in the beginning. Um, so yes, we are, oh, hold on. Now it's not letting me control. Hold on two seconds. There we go. Okay, so I know you talked a little bit about us, but um, just a quick recap. We were formed in 2000, just after Columbine. Uh, we are statewide grassroots gun violence prevention organization, actually the longest serving in Colorado, um, which a lot of people don't know. Um, we are now comprised of three branches. We have the 501c4 for lobbying, the 501c3 for education and outreach. That's the board that I lead. Um, and we also have a political action committee. Um, and a lot of people don't know this. We are an affiliate of the umbrella group States United to prevent gun violence. Our mission is to reduce gun violence in Colorado through education, outreach, and legislative advocacy. And our vision is that we are a state free from gun violence. And I just threw up our, our little belief statement below. I'm not gonna read it, but you'll have it if you wanna go back to it. Our goals are to reduce gun violence. Oh, do you have a question? Yeah, just a second. We're not seeing your, uh, you didn't advance it for us. Um, oh, darn. Okay. So could you go to full screen? Because we see... Um, I am full screen. Hold on. Bring your... Sh it says sharing is paused. Okay. Um, try... Let's see. You were full screen somehow. I mean, I, what I can see right now is your slide two, but I also see the whole PowerPoint, you know, you're in PowerPoint and you're not in uh, slideshow. Oh, okay, hold on a second here. I'm so sorry. I had this all figured out here. Um, they look like great slides. Can we? <laughs> oh no. Okay, can you stop the sharing for a minute? 
Or well, I, there, I, you, you, I just did. Okay. You just stopped it. Yep. Try it again. I am so sorry. Okay. We're going to do this. Share okay. screen. Optimize. Maybe there's a technology elf out there today. <laughs> there might be. Okay, so so you started you started screen sharing. There you go. Now see if you can advance it. Yeah, are yes. you seeing full screen? Yes. Now we see we see it all now. You got ah, it. Thank goodness. Okay. All right. So, so we have your mission and everything there. Okay, great. Perfect. I am so sorry about that. And thank you for letting me know and thank you for stopping me. Okay, so here we are. Everyone can see our goals, yes? Yes? Hello? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, okay good. Our goals. All right. Uh, I'm going to talk quickly <laughs> so I can get through this. Our goals, three goal, main goals, to reduce gun violence through education, outreach, and legislative advocacy, to strengthen gun safety laws that reduce preventable injuries and deaths, and to encourage responsible gun ownership among gun owners. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I put together this um, a list of sort of a comprehensive approach to reduce gun violence. As we all know, it's not, um, there's no simple fix. Um, but here um, I've gathered a few ideas and, and Colorado Ceasefire touches on a few of them. Uh, to treat the gun violence epidemic as a public health issue, to address the root cause of gun violence, implementing common sense gun legislation at both the state and federal level, holding the gun industry and manufacturers responsible, investing in community violence prevention programs, investing in research, investing in mental emotional health services, and also just in general, just shifting the culture of guns in this country. You know, we need young people to know that just guns are quote, not, not cool. At least this is what I hear from people who work on the ground in high crime communities. So just something to think about as we, as we take a look at this issue as a whole and how we go about doing our work. So now I have a fun little quiz. Don't worry, it's not graded, but it just um, gets us to think about what we really do know about gun violence prevention. Or gun, I'm sorry, gun violence in general in the United States. So I'm going to do each question, and then I don't. You can either just think, guess to yourself, or put it in the chat, um, and we'll just go through these. So, what do you know about gun violence? About how many people do you think in the United States are shot each year? And if somebody wants to shout out an answer, you're welcome to, or you can keep it yourself, but I'll just kind of go through these at a decent pace. The answer- now, So Mount Marnie, by shot, you don't, you mean killed or just shot? Nope, just shot. Uh, must be D. You are correct. Good job. About 115,000 per year in the United States are shot. And that is, that is not killed, that is shot. Next question though follows that, of those shot annually, how many do you think are killed? 35,000. Best guess. Nice work, good job. 35,000 around, about 38 actually. How many guns do you think there are in the United States, States per 100 people? Answer is 88. No, 32. 80, 88? 88. You're, you are three for three. Yes. Oh, my goodness. About 88, actually. Wow. <laughs> Good job. You win a prize at the end if you can get them all. <laughs> uh, the number of guns in America has increased. Oh, sorry. That shouldn't be a question. The number of guns in America has increased over the last 20 years. True or true, false? True, true. Has to be true. True, 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 unfortunately. What is the most common type of firearm? What do we think? And a, a handgun. Nice, good job. What kind of firearms most commonly used in homicides? Handgun. Yep, you got it. What percentage of gun deaths are the result of mass shootings, do you think? Mm. Is 
Uh, very small, very small. Yeah, I was going to say less than 2%. Yeah, yeah you know, they, they do get the most coverage um, and the most reaction, but really they make up a very, very small percentage of all gun violence across the country. Yeah. As horrible as they are. Um, most gun deaths in the United States are homicides, true or false? Hmm. Well, it's either suicides or homicides. I forget which. Uh, true. You're um, actually, you're right. It's suicide. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a little over sixty percent. Yep. Okay. More, more in Colorado, actually. Hmm. What percent of reported suicide attempts carried out with a gun result in a death? Oh, at least eighty percent. Yep, you got it. About eighty-two percent, actually. About how many children are shot each day in America? Do we think? 10. Oh, I wish 20. Oh, dear. 19, actually, on wow. average, to be exact. Yeah. Jeez. Mm, okay. Right. Um, every gun buyer undergo, undergoes a background check, whether purchasing from a store or private seller. And this is federal. True or false? False uh, to the third power. <laughs> You're correct. You are correct. It is false. However, in Colorado, as you probably know, we do we did close that gun show loophole, and so now um, everybody undergoes a background check, including private sellers here in Colorado. Chicago has the highest homicide rate in America. True or false? I would best. I would think it would be close. I would. I. I would guess true. It's interesting. It's actually false. It's true in raw numbers, but on a cur per capita basis, it's actually um, New Orleans, St. Louis, and uh, Buffalo are higher. Wow. Per capita. I know. Interesting. I thought that was interesting too, because you always hear about the crime in Chicago. Yeah. Households with guns are more likely to experience a fatality from a crime, accident, or suicide than households without guns. True or false? True to the tenth power. True to the millionth, exactly. You got it. More guns equal, sorry, more guns equals uh, more likelihood that there's going to be a fatality um, or an accident um, if there are guns present. So thank you for going through that little exercise for me. I thought it was pretty interesting to know how we, uh, we what we think we know and what we actually know. So... We'll move on here. I just grabbed a couple of slides with some interesting stats. Um, America has the weakest gun laws, as we know, um, but we also have the most guns, about 393 million of any comparable nation. And the US accounts for just 4% of the world's population, but 35% of global firearm suicides, which is very interesting, I thought. And Americans are 25 times more likely to be killed in a gun homicide than people in other comparable nations, which I find very horrifying. This is a equally horrifying graphic, but really just this is all the mass shootings that have occurred um, in this country from 2009 to 2021. And the size of the dots represent the size of the shooting and how many people were injured. So. Although they represent a very small percentage, they're still, it's, it's the, just the proliferation of them um, and the disruption that they cause is, is pretty horrific. Now we'll start to focus on what's happening in Colorado here. We're gonna look at the impact of gun violence here in Colorado, focusing on gun suicide, urban gun violence, domestic and intimate partner violence, and youth and guns. Um, and for gun suicide, approximately 78% of gun deaths are suicides, which I find interesting. And more than 50% of all suicide deaths involve a firearm. From 2013 to 2017, 2,700 plus people died by gun-related suicide, which equals about one every 16 hours. And here you can see in 2019, there were 647 firearm suicides including 43 children and teens, which is horrible. Um, and as I mentioned before, more than three quarters of the gun deaths were suicide in 2019. It's a, it's a big problem here in Colorado, as well as many other Western states actually. 
Um, and half of, as I said before, also half of all suicides were by firearm in 2019. So as far as urban gun violence, as we know, communities of color are disproportionately impacted and black and Hispanic men make up less than 30% of our population here in Colorado, but they do account for more than 47% of our state's homicide victims. And black men ages 20, 18 to 24 are nearly 13 times more likely to be than white men um, who are the same age to be murdered with a gun. So here's a, a brief uh, glance at firearm homicides. There are 164 in 2019, including 29 children and teens. And nearly one in five gun deaths were homicides in 2019. And two thirds of homicides were by firearm. Big intersection of guns and, and domestic violence or intimate partner violence. Guns make domestic violence incidents far, far more likely to end in gun death. And the presence of a firearm in an intimate partner situation increases the risk of homicide by 500%. So you're five times more likely to end in death if there's a gun present. Over 55% of Colorado's intimate partner homicides involve a gun. And from 2007 to 2016, 133 people were killed by gun by their intimate partner in Colorado. Just tragic. Also, exploring the intersection of youth and guns, exposure to gun violence can cause lasting trauma, as we know, in young people leading to PTSD, chronic stress, and also decreased future earnings. From 2013 to 2017, 604 people under 25 were killed with a gun here in Colorado. They are the second leading cause, guns that is, are the second leading cause of death for children ages one to 17, which is horrendous, horrendous. This um, graph shows the correlation between guns and gun deaths. As you can see from 2000 to 2020, the number of guns has sold has risen, right? Background checks, thank God, has risen with it. But we also see a direct correlation to total firearm deaths and suicide deaths. So we know that there's a direct relationship between the number of guns out there and the firearm death rate. I'll just give you a couple minutes to look at this or a couple seconds, sorry. Interesting facts about how COVID impacted gun violence. There was a surge in gun purchases of 46% in Colorado from 2019. Also correlating with that was a surge in gun homicides of 26% from 2019. And in 2020, somebody was shot nearly every day. So, do state gun laws make a difference? They most definitely do. Stronger gun laws work. Research shows there's a direct correlation between stricter gun legislation and a reduction in gun violence. You can see from this chart, this plots out all of the state's um, various gun laws and where they lie, and then the rank of gun deaths. And you can see Colorado is somewhere in the upper third and so you can see as you get towards the bottom, the ones with stronger gun laws have fewer deaths. And the ones with weaker gun laws over here are obviously have higher deaths. And we are somewhere right around here. So there's work to be done in Colorado. So let's talk about the legislation a little bit. Here's a partial list of some of the laws on the books that we were involved in implementing. In 2013, uh, we have background checks on each and every gun transfer, even at gun shows, as I mentioned earlier, and the buyer has to pay for the background checks, not pack taxpayers. We have a ban on high capacity magazines. Uh, we have a domestic violence abuser firearm relinquishment, which was just strengthened actually this year, a new legislation. And we have an in-person training required for concealed carry permits. And in 2019, 
we passed uh, the extreme risk protection order law, which allows um, law enforcement or a family member to uh, remove firearms from a person who is deemed a danger to themselves or others. And that went to, into effect January, 2020. We've been busy this legislative session. There were a few bad, we call them bad bills, which are the bills that the Republican, or I'm sorry, the, the pro-gun people bring up every year. It happens to be Republicans um, every year. And these were defeated once again. Uh, there was a gun in schools bill, repeal of the ban on high capacity magazines, stand your ground for business, and a repeal of the extreme risk protection law. And all of those failed, thank goodness. But some positive new, more positive news. These are some proactive gun bills that were just recently passed. A safe storage bill, um, which, allow, which requires people to lock their firearms up. Uh, domestic violence firearms re relinquishment, which I mentioned that strengthens the um, procedures for um, getting people who are accused or who are um, convicted of domestic violence offenses to um, more of a mechanism for uh, firearm relinquishment and a reporting of lost and stolen firearms, which is a big problem here in Colorado. Um, and actually, as of just last week, um, you know, the, our current legislators are hearing our calls to action and they've introduced yet an additional comprehensive, um, or they talked that they will be introducing it this week, but they had a press conference on it, introducing a comprehensive legislative package, which will include three main areas, a repeal of the 2003 preemption law, which will allow localities to regulate guns. They will improve our background check system by, um, two pieces, one removing the Charleston loophole, which is, um, if some of you don't know, that was if uh, they did not, if somebody went underwent a background check and within three days, it still wasn't back yet, they allowed them to go ahead with the purchase. Um, that will be no longer. They will have to wait for the full background check. Um, and also prohibiting those convicted of a violent misdemeanor in the last five years to purchase a firearm. Um, it will also increase funding for uh, GVP education measures, including the ERPO law that I just talked about. And um, it will also have funding for the establishment of an Office of Gun Violence Prevention. And we should hear more about that this week. It's being heard in the judiciary. So how can we as everyday citizens um, help? How, how can we help move things forward? Well, the first thing and the most important thing is to vote. This is the most single most important thing you can do to vote for uh, legislators who support common sense gun violence prevention and vote out those that don't. Call your legislators, urge them to um, vote yes on these important pieces of legislation. Let them know how you feel, be loud. Um, you could start a poster art card writing campaign. Uh, you could host a fundraiser. We are really in a, a time of growth right now in capacity building, wanting to add some full-time staff. Um, so um, dollars are needed more than ever. Um, feel free to write op-eds or letters to the editor. Um, do more forums such as this. Um, please follow us on social media or sign up um, for a newsletter and just stay informed of what's happening. And that... With that, I will wrap it up and I'm gonna try and, can you, am I, do I have to stop sharing my own screen or do you do that for me? Oh, uh, sorry, you... a list of resources here. Oh, there um, you go. Of national organizations, um, including ours, um, if you wanna learn more about gun violence prevention. All are wonderful. Okay, be, okay, Marty, so that was great. And I really like uh, the fact that you did a PowerPoint um, Okay, you stop sharing yourself now. If you could, <laughs> now, if I, you need, could, I need remedial Zoom, I should have worked on that. You before. are now. You need to do one more thing. <laughs> okay. If, if you go to the participants and click down at the bottom of the screen and click on that. Yep. All right, and then if you look by your name, you'll see that you are the host. You see the FPCC Zoom three. I do. All right. Click on the more. Okay. And then make me the host. Wonderful. Change host. Okay. Done. Now what? 
All right. Now, if that's true, then see, yes. Now I can stop the um, the recording. So I'm going to do that now because we that way we can be freer and everything to talk about questions and answers. So I'm going to okay. stop the recording. But this right. is really this is really great. Um,